Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. I think we have one more um, update before uh, before New Year's, all right? I think we have one more, so I, I want to give uh, you guys an early uh, God bless and wish you guys a happy holiday, uh, whatever you're celebrating towards uh, the end of the year. Uh, I want to wish everybody a he healthy and happy uh, holiday season. Uh, again, this business that we're in um, is, is a very, very large commitment. Okay. And I said this uh, yesterday, I tweeted this out and, and I said, for all you guys are trading for two, three years and you guys are frustrated. Okay. Um, you know, you see measured of success. You see, you know, you see the prize at the end of the tunnel. Unfortunately, for many of you guys, um, you're so frustrated, you can't get to that level yet. You just can't get to that level, whether it's consistency, profitability, or just being able to kind of control the narrative. Okay. And I want to just express to you guys, and I've said this throughout the years, you're not supposed to. Okay. You're really not supposed to. You don't need to be frustrated. Um, you kind of just need to kind of take a step back take a deep breath and just understand you're not supposed to get all this stuff. Okay. Um, you know, trading two, three years, it, it might sound like it's a lot of time. It really does. Um, but it's actually nothing. You guys are literally in your infancy stages. Uh, anybody who's been trading for 10, 15, I'm going on my 21st year now, you know, th this is a lifetime commitment. Okay. There, this really is, this is not a hobby. So for most of you guys who are uh, balancing uh, work, full-time job, and are balancing a family, hectic, hectic family life, and all that good stuff, it, it takes a lot of, I mean, it really does take not even a lot of effort. The effort, it has to be there. I mean, that, that's for sure. The will and the want and the dedication to, you know, to sit down and really uh, try to embrace all the information, that's incredibly important. But a lot of you guys, unfortunately, you know, it's family life, right? It, it, you know, you have a you have a full time job, you have kids, you have tuitions, you have uh, car payments, you have mortgage payments, you have everything in the above. And sometimes it's just hard to be, right? Or hard to want to be a full time trader. And, and again, where does it say you need to be? Okay, where does it say, uh, you know, in the in the you know in the rule book that you need to be a full time trader um, to have any any type of consistency or success? I, I think. I think a lot of people ro romanticize the idea of being a full-time trader because it's sexy, right? You're your own boss. You sit there making your own hours. If you trade, if you don't want to trade, it's up to you. You don't want to leave the house. You don't have to leave the house. So all these things are great. And you romanticize and you put this business on such a, a high level, right? It's such a pedestal that you, you're forcing yourself to put so much pressure on yourself to achieve, to that, get to that level that you are burning yourself out in the process. And if you take a step back, you really have to, you know, ask yourself an honest question. I mean, is my lifestyle conducive for me with my family life and everything in between? Is it really, is the, the possibility of trading full time a reality? And again, if it's not, it's not a big deal. I, again, I don't know why everybody needs to be a full time trader. A lot of the people that have a lot of success, okay, especially from like year three to five in that intermediate area when you finally start uh, getting that light bulb, they get that consistency because they made it through year three, right? They're kind of on the year three to year five, and they finally starting to find a li little bit level of success, a little bit level of consistency. But the reason why they're getting that consistency is their income, right? Their other income that they're coming in every single week that's paying for your mortgage, paying for your uh, for your kids' uh, clothes and food and all that stuff. It's, it's depleting your ability to control your emotions that, you know, again, when you have income coming in, it's so much easier to trade because you know that your kids are fed. You know that you have a steady job. So the idea that you want to be a full-time trader, that's great. Right. But the idea of have income and in supporting your family and making sure your kids have smile on their faces, that's the most important part. Again, if you're lucky enough 
uh, to put yourself in a position to have really great amount of outside revenue coming in. Trading is so much easier mentally because you're not pressing every single decision. When you want to be a full-time trader, all that goes away. You have to be perfect. You have to be extra perfect. You can't be, you know, you can't sit around for two, three, four days waiting for the market to expand because, well, you want to trade. Again, having that income level coming in, okay, on your other jobs, your investments, whatever the case may be, that's giving you the cushion to trade, okay, not the other way around. So, you know, the idea of being a full-time trader, it's awesome, right? It's a great idea and it's fantastic. And again, unfortunately, so many people want to, okay, but realistically don't have that opportunity because of their outside influences. And that's okay. Okay, just understand that's okay. Again, there's no reason to believe or to think that you can't trade for a living, okay, and at the same time have a, have a full time job. It's okay. I know so many people that do that, and it's very, very important to understand the reason why they're able to do that successfully is because they have that burden taken off because they do have outside income coming in. So, again, guys, just relax. If you're trading two, three years, don't be frustrated, right? Don't be frustrated. Nobody is expecting you. Uh, nobody's expecting you to understand everything, to know everything. Again, at, at this cycle, you're, you're an infant, right? Two, three years old. Just imagine a child at two, three years. And, you know, at, you know, you're driving at 16. You can't even, you barely can put a sentence together at year two, right? So life is, is the most extraordinary teacher. It's experience. It's time. And the more time you put into this business, the more it makes sense. So at two, three years, don't put a lot of time. Your first two, three years, just to consume a bunch of information in the world that this market has to give. There's so many moving parts that nobody can just sit down and say, well, this is what happened. This is a year or two. This is what you're supposed to. It's not what you're supposed to do. It's what you're not supposed to do. Okay. It, you know, I, again, I can sit down with anybody and say, well, this is a pivot. You know, you, you, you know, here's a pivot right here. You short it here. You go to the next support and it confirms this. You should go to the next. That's the easy part, right? That's the easy part because it's the visual part. What not to do is the hardest part in the world because there's 10,000 different scenarios that can really, really, you know, put a curveball, put a wrench in your, in your wheel. And the next thing you know, you are on tilt. So again, the idea of being your own boss, that's great. I know social media is, it's wonderful. You're on islands, you're in here, you're there. That's fantastic. You can trade on, on your iWatch. It's beautiful. It's a wonderful thing. But the reality, this is the hardest thing you're ever going to, ever going to try to do in your life because this is not a real business. Okay. This is a business that actively trading adults have been doing for less than 30 years. Okay. Really main street, less than 30 years. So again, there is no blueprint for us. Okay. There is no blueprint for us. I'm going on my 21st year. I'm finding creative ways to shoot myself in the foot every week. Okay. And this is 20, almost 21 years in for you two, three years. Why are you putting so much emphasis to understanding everything? You're not going to understand everything. I don't understand everything. Okay. I'm the biggest schmuck on the planet. So it takes me longer, but at least I put the ego away. At least I understand that I keep on needing to learn more and more, not to repeat the same careless mistakes that have been driving me nuts for 20 years. So why should you put yourself in a position that you're glamorizing an industry that you think you are entitled? And again, the word entitled is not for everybody. Okay. There's so many people, incredibly hardworking people that will work two, three jobs and they want it bad. They want it bad. Just circumstances, unfortunately, will not let them get to that position. But again, guys, you have to just face reality and say, that's okay as well. I'm more than willing to be an investor. I'm more than willing to be a passive trader. I'm more than willing to put myself in a situation 10 years from now, even if I am on year three, year four education, I want to be involved. But give yourself that opportunity. You, you don't need to prove anything to anybody. You don't need to rush the learning curve. You don't need to pretend that, you know, you know, Everything that we're talking about doesn't exist. Just relax, man. Enjoy your life. Enjoy. You don't need to do everything at once. It's all about the journey. It's all about putting yourself in a situation for tomorrow. It's not about today. It's all about tomorrow. And again, guys, for all you guys that are trading for two, three years, I know it sucks. It sucks. And a lot of you guys are at the point of you want to rip out your eyeballs and just, just throw them out the window. I get it. Okay. But just understand everybody that's been trading before you and after are, is going to go the same thing. Okay. Um, unfortunately, people have different routes, different timelines for clarity. But again, as long as you accept that and appreciate the journey, everything will work out. So have faith um, and, you know, God will bless you. 
Um, so let's talk about it, right? Indexes are flat this week, you know, up a little bit. Uh, NASDAQ, S&P, uh, and the Dow Jones, flat, right? Everybody was waiting for uh, news. And when you're trading a headline-driven market, especially with China, you're going to have a lot of inconsistencies, up, down, up, down, up, down. So this week, we had the Fed. We had economic numbers, and they were cool. That's fine. We have that uh, pretty much every week, and everything is fine. The most important uh, piece of information that we were waiting for, it was from China, okay? And throughout the years, we're, we're just getting headlines from the White House. They are controlling the narrative. We're very, very, um, we are very confident a deal is going to get done. Market goes up. We're very, very confident that, well, you know, maybe a deal doesn't get done. The market goes down. But this time around was a little bit different. You know, we weren't getting that message from the White House, we are actually we're waiting for the Chinese. And Friday, uh, Friday, you know, they made that announcement. They are we're going to uh, put out some sort of press release on the um, developments, right? On the developments of this Phase One deal, okay? And the market was just sitting there and waiting, sitting and waiting. And fr finally, Friday, uh, around I think it was around um, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, they finally released some news. And this was actually much more important than uh, Trump headline or the White House or Kudlow or anything in between. And they finally you know, announced some agreement to this phase one, right? The phase one we heard uh, a couple of months back with some details. And the most important part of those details was some uh, agreements on the agricultural part, uh, the December 15 um tariff kind of pushed forward or moved away, whatever the hell the headline was, it doesn't make a difference at this point. And the bulls kind of got a little bit more relief and that which was very, very good. The problem is when you're a trader and you are facing a headline potential, okay, you are, you basically have the same amount of probability to succeed as betting a money line on a sporting event. It was very, very important to understand that. Uh, and on Friday, I, I literally sat there and waiting for this damn headline. And I passed on a trade, a, a phenomenal trade on a bounce on NVIDIA that bounced $6. And I was okay with that. Okay. I was okay with that because again, after time, I think somebody in the live webinar asked me, um, I think it was, I think it was Peter on Tuesday or Wednesday. He asked me, how, how are you so comfortable? Okay. Uh, letting a trade go that it works out. And, you know, and, and again, over time, you, you know, you appreciate the control part of this business. And after a while, you start getting numb to results. You start, you know, really appreciating the what ifs happens if you, you know, if, if you, if you take a trade and you're not comfortable, you take a trade that your odds, the probability stacked against you. And I was okay with that. And so, although I missed uh, the open, okay, I really didn't want to start my day until I kind of heard some more guidance uh, from the Chinese. And again, when you take a bounce play on the video, and I know some of you guys caught this trade. I, I didn't take it. You know, I didn't take it. When you when you look at this uh, this play, this 83 remount on NVIDIA that went to 229, and you turn around and say, wow, that's six points. Yeah, that's great. And it sucks that I missed it. But at least, again, what you want to do as a trader, you want to demonstrate control. You know, you want to remove that FOMO, right? It's called JOMO, the joy of missing out. Um, you want to put yourself in a situation that the market, you know, you're in control of the market. The market's not, the market's not in control of you. And, and again, that's another thing. Nobody's going to teach you that. That comes with time. So you had some really very, very tight channels this week. What I, what I liked about this week, how we traded, we, we definitely took advantage of a lot of intervals this week, which was very, very good. Was it one of those weeks you had 10 pivots? Again, if you've been watching, um, if you've been watching the nightly update every single day this week, you notice the same thing. Value, right? Two, three pivots, two, three pivots, two, three pivots. The one day that the market lost its freaking mind was Thursday, okay, which was the semiconductor. We highlighted the semiconductor trade and everything happened at once. I was lucky enough to catch NVIDIA uh, and then Roku back on the way down that day, but everything happened at once. And this was our expansion day, but it was on Thursday, okay, it was on Thursday. So we had literally one day of expansion for the whole week. Again, was the market tradable this week? Absolutely. Tesla was a monster. Um, Roku was very tradable. And the video was awesome this week. Really, really awesome this week. Um, in every way, shape, and form. Shop was very, very strong as well. Apple, again, recovered from any downgrades, from any iPhone trim sales, this and that, the other thing. So the market continues to be very, very strong. But Thursday, 
which is a ridiculous day. Everything expanded. And I, and I said this for uh, the Thursday night update. How many times do you see NVIDIA put up a $6 candle? You know, AMD put up a $3 candle. I mean, does that make sense? Clack and Qualcomm. When was the last time you saw a $3 move on Qualcomm? So we got that expansion day. Friday came along. It was a headline day. I wanted to make sure that headline was at least out of the way. Yes, did I miss um, did I miss a phenomenal bounce on um, NVIDIA? Absolutely, I did. I caught NVIDIA on this 228 break afterwards, and this is why I said experienced traders only. So Friday, we didn't get that monster, monster day. Okay, usually we have so much speculation money. I do think, you know, towards the end of this year, well, I know, I know a lot of people already uh, started going on vacation last week. Okay, we are what? Starting tomorrow, we're going to be, what, eight days away from Christmas. People, uh, a lot of funds hedge funds, pension funds, whatever the case may be, they are settling their books down, right? They're kind of closing out their books for the year because the market has been very, very strong. They could afford to do so. You don't need to play catch up when you're writing a book in an exceptional, explosional uh, uh, bull market. So that's very, very good. So you're, you're, you know, we were looking to the point that you're going to get less opportunity. The value will be there. But the most important part, especially going into this week, just understand less is more just look for value. If the market does rally into the end of the year, that's fantastic. If it doesn't and the channels contract again, that's okay as well. This is everything that we signed up for for the first time that you opened up your first brokerage account, whatever the amount of money was, you are signing up for the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent, and everything else that comes with it. So again, don't put a lot of pressure on yourself. This is all part of the journey. So let's talk about Friday session. Um, Goldman Sachs, that's been, you know, it's been sitting above that 225 breakout price for several days. Um, it needed to reclaim 220. Okay. Uh, the financials look really, really good. The problem is you can't really trade financials. Okay. The financials are more of like, you know, you buy the breakout or, or intermediate level, whatever you want to be. And you just got to just ride this and using the previous day's low as a stop. If you can, if you can see here, uh, it broke out above 25. It went to 20, 27. Uh, I talked about this two, uh, 228 pivot pre-market, which never got there. And again, the reason was because, again, if you look at the 60-minute channel, again, I look at all data. And if you look at all this whole channel here, this is 228. So it's very, very important to, again, uh, correlate the 60-minute view for entry and obviously use the daily chart as your macro uh, guide. So obviously, this never triggered, uh, never confirmed, uh, traded as high as uh, actually 227.99. So again, this is how specific uh, these pivots are. Uh, KRTX never never got up to the 79, which was very, very, which was very weird. I, I really thought um, after that Thursday day, you're going to have another session above that 679 and never got up there. And now it's, you know, it's tested the 63 level several times. You know what? We should really start watching this thing uh, back to the downside because if this thing starts losing 63, right? 63, 63, 63, 63. Yeah, this thing starts losing 63. There's a lot of room down. You can see to the 48 level. So obviously that didn't trigger uh, Adaptic uh, 32. I like the Adaptic of 32. That never triggered, right? Never triggered that. So you can see not only did we have, not only did we have uh, a market sensitive headline driven market, but a lot of these names just didn't, didn't even trigger. Uh, in the video I caught, uh, and unfortunately, I know, I know a lot of you guys caught that bounce off the 220, uh, 223. Again, the video has been actually a good trader for me the whole week. Um, it's been really, really good. Again, we've been trading the video since we started reclaiming this 10-day moving average. If you go through my, uh, for all you guys who are not on the live webinar, you go through my timeline in the last week or so, you can see pivots all over the place. 213, 50, 14, 50, 18, uh, 28. All these things were very, very good. So the video is actually a pretty good damn good trader uh, this week. Week. So I missed the bounce. No, excuse me. I don't want to say I missed the bounce. I didn't take the bounce. I, I, I knew this headline was above me. I just didn't feel like putting on the risk. Uh, it started reclaiming that 83 and just exploded up. So if you did take it, and a lot of you guys did, Kane was making fun of me in the room. Dan, I'm going to sell you my 223 stock that I bought for you to buy at a 228. I probably did buy Kane's stock. Uh, but yeah, I, I scalped it. Once the news came out, I did scalp it from the 228 level, uh, which was fine. But obviously, 223 to 228 is a whole big different story. 228 to 229. So a whole big different game there. Um, Amazon was close. Okay, I still like Amazon. And I said, hey, you know what? Amazon really needs to reclaim the 72, 73. And you can see how close Amazon is. There's just something wrong with this name, man. It just keeps on 
coming up, right? You can see the 72, 73 level right here, this whole range right here. It keeps on coming in this level, like Friday's uh, pre-market high was 1770, and it just rolls over again. I, I don't know, I can't figure out what's going on with Amazon. Obviously, um, obviously it, didn't, uh, it didn't even come close to uh, managing. Uh, KOD, uh, you know, too thin of a stock. It traded up to 64.50 and then never confirmed. Okay, nothing there. Uh, shop. I, I caught a piece of this shop scalp. Uh, I, I don't usually trade shop a lot, um, but I did trade it on Friday uh, only because, again, I, I kind of missed my window with everything else uh, because of the timeline. Uh, shop, you know, again, here's shop. Uh, we got long shop at, uh, I got long a little under 284, right? So here was the whole 280, excuse me, right here. It was 284 right here. It got above the 284. I, I said there was a shot. It was going to get down. To, it was going to get to 292. Um, I sold it on the way up. Okay, I sold it on the way up, and I, I got actually stopped out of my last piece break even. Uh, it actually did make it to 292. Again, I was just in scalp mode. Um, I was just in scalp mode. The reason why I thought it could get to 92, that was the upper Bollinger Band. If you look at the high here, it was perfectly at 292. So again, I was just kind of in scalping mode. Uh, yeah. So here it is. Uh, 384 needs to build for a test of 392. That was the high of the day. Uh, Nvidia, Nvidia, you know, this was, you know, I took it on the, on the way up just for a scalp. This was the biggest move, okay? This was the biggest move of the day. Um, Roku, right? We started talking about Roku for three, four days. We were watching kind of the video. You kind of see that every single time it wants to rally, it fades, and every single time it wants to fade, it rallies. And I was just watching this thing and it just didn't rally, it just didn't rally with the rest of the market, with the, with the, with the spools rallying. And this was the big number here, 138, uh, 138, 137.70. If it builds below, it can flush. Um, here's my comments on shop, taking them out. Could go to 92 though. Uh, yeah, so check this out. So this is how it started. I mean, so these were the levels. Uh, take on the way down, uh, 136.80 is yesterday's low, with the lower band is 60.40 if it completes a cycle. And then it completed its cycle. Okay, and then it completed its cycle, and let me just show you just from the from from the areas of interest. So this is Amazon needs to reclaim 1770. That didn't do that. Uh, but here's the most important part of Roku, right? So here's the most important part. So Roku started building above this uh, below this 138.13 level. Okay, so then I, I said there was a shot it gets down to 136.80, which was candle here. Okay, and I said, hey. It's probably going to start, stop around the 136.40s because that was the Bollinger Band. And then it started building below 136. And I was talking about there's a shot it gets down to 132. And Roku just got just destroyed, just absolutely destroyed. Uh, I actually like it for, for, for Monday. You know, I think it goes lower. I think there's a shot it gets down to 30. And any close below 30, I mean, there's, there's a lot of room down. I mean, again, obviously the market would have to... Uh, really help it out. But there is a lot of room down on Roku, uh, any close below this uh, rising macro support of 30. So I, I like it. I think if this takes out this channel here, I think there's like a couple bucks in the trade just for the initial move. But any close, guys, any close on Roku uh, below that 130.80, right, 130.50 level, there's a lot of room down. So uh, keep an eye on that. So overall, uh, no complaints uh, about the week. Uh, again, you don't want to, uh, you know, you don't want to burn mental equity when you have channels contracting, but when they expand, like that we saw on Thursday sessions, uh, things become uh, pretty good. So let me give you guys some ideas uh, for Monday. Okay, for Monday, let me give you guys some ideas. So I like a bounce on Facebook. Okay, uh, Facebook was strong until like this week. Um, you saw that news come out on possible FTC violations, blah, blah, blah. Look, we're in a bull market. When you're in a bull market, you have to respect technicals. I think if Facebook could get down to here, everybody see that, guys? You see this rising kind of aqua, right? Kind of aqua line. The, the bottom of this channel here is around that one, you know, 192.30s, 192.50s. Okay. Keep in mind, we're still in the bull market. If this thing holds, right? If it holds at 192.30s, 192.50s, I, I think that's going to, I think it's going to start bouncing back. Again, it's a big if, 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 if. But the probability, if you believe stocks hold major areas, then you have to give the 50-day moving average uh, kind of the benefit of the doubt. So I, I kind of want to watch Facebook on a bounce somewhere around this 192.30s, 192.50s. Obviously, the low of the move will be your max pain. So if it gets down, for example, 192.10, uh, right, and you get long 192.30s, well, then 192.10 is, is your out. So you, you could have a very, very good risk reward for a possible bounce back. So let's definitely keep an eye on that. Um, I kind of like Match.com. 
Um, again, the stocks to buy in in a in a linear bull market, okay, are the ones that are coming off a of bottom. If you guys notice, I've been putting a lot of names like Boom. You guys remember the, the chart on Boom from Tuesday, right? Fifty dollar break. Again, if you look at the common denominator from Boom, right? Look where Boom has come from. Boom is coming from the bottom. Correct. So if you look at boom, that $50 break that we had earlier in the week, $50 is you know, kind of trading to this 5350s area. Again, it's coming off a of bottom. If you are looking at match.com, right? Oops, MTCH. If you're looking at match, right, it's coming off a of bottom. So if match can start reclaiming this channel right here, roughly around the 72, 7250 area, there's a shot it starts going to 74 and maybe 75. So for all you guys who are swinging these names, Keep an eye on it. looks pretty good. Keep an eye on that as well. Um, shop looks really, you know, shop continues to look really good as well. Again, just hit supply. If it can reclaim this whole supply over here, there's a shot. Shop goes back to 410. Again, so we have to watch this area here for the rest of the week. And I kind of like this TBTH. Um, TB, what is it? TBPH. For all you guys who are training non-beta, I, I don't know what the hell this thing is, but... It does look pretty good. I have this big, big, big move consolidation. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Tomorrow will be day fourteen. You have almost three weeks of consolidation. If it starts reclaiming, you know, starts reclaiming twenty-two twenty, twenty-two thirty, you could get a move uh, within the volume uh, to that 23 uh, 30s upper Bollinger for the initial pop. So, uh, guys, that's it. You guys, have an awesome, awesome Sunday. Have a great rest. Enjoy your holidays. Enjoy your life. If you're trading with us this week, uh, please get to Morning Strategy. Uh, we start a little bit after 9 o'clock Eastern time. Um, and if you're not, God bless. Have an awesome, awesome trading week. And with God's help, we'll see each other all in the field tomorrow. Take Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.